Welcome to the worship of First Baptist Church of Los Angeles here on the 22nd of November. We are not having our in-person outdoor worship, but this is a recorded worship for the 22nd of November 2020. Um, let us come and worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the blessing of this day, the blessing of your care. We give you thanks. We thank you that there are many ways that you protect us, that you provide for our needs, and you give us the promise of your eternal love, that we are welcomed into your presence in the time that we live in this life, but also into your eternal care after this life. We trust in the power of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In him we pray and give our thanks this day, and we thank you for people, family, community. We thank you ultimately that your truth prevails and your justice, your righteousness. We put our trust in you. Amen. So today is a time of thanksgiving. I think of thanksgiving um, way back from when I was growing up hearing great hymns and great songs of the church. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. And I think of that hymn and its connection to the pilgrims. Think about the settlers who came for religious freedom from the tyranny of English monarchs and kings. King Charles I was an awful monarch. And uh, it, even, you know, think of other kings in other times. There are many problems some, with human leaders. But the pilgrims came hoping that to have a fresh beginning, a new start. Um, and they hoped that they would be able to bring their faith to a new land without all the impositions of monarchs. So they gathered together to ask the Lord's blessing. And we'll sing the hymn, We Gather Together. We gather together to Chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing. Now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. We sign us to guide us, our God with us joining. Ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning. Thou, Lord, was at our side. All glory be thine. We all do extol thee, our leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation, thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Forever, God is with us. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. that's been reborn as love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever he is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever 
just setting sun is love endures forever by the grace of God we will carry on love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise Let's pray. Gracious God, we open our hearts to you today. We give you thanks as, on this Sunday, on this day of rest and worship, on this day when in our place of sanctuary, wherever that is, we find that you're there with us. We thank you for the blessing of family, for friends, for provision of food. We thank you for provision of income and for provision of health. We pray for one another in the midst of hard times. We pray for those who are going through the, this coronavirus personally or have experienced the effect of it because of family and, love, and loved ones or loss of job or being on the front lines. We pray for our nurses and doctors and first responders. We pray for those who provide essential services we give you thanks for so many people this day. We pray that you will guide us, that we can help one another. We pray for the development of the vaccine and the different ways that it will be distributed. We pray that you will provide a transition for leadership in our country that will not be either divisive or destructive. We pray, gracious God, for your grace. We pray for your help. We pray for your wisdom, and we thank you that you offer that to us, and if we only open our hearts and we can work together, we will discover your presence. If we turn from those ways that are not in your path of righteousness, those wicked ways that may be far from you, we find that you open your heart and you guide us as you're ready to do, and we pray for your help in these times, for healing, for restoration. We thank you for the opportunities of freedom, but we ask your help in the wisdom of responsibility that comes with freedom. So gracious God, as people in their hearts are gathered or even physically may be gathered, may we all take care and be mindful and caring for one another in whatever ways we need to be. Thank you, God, that you lead us, and thank you that you've given us your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading for today is found from Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. Here we find Paul expressing his gratitude to the church, and he says this, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world 
just as it has been done doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. When we think about gathering together for Thanksgiving, um, I think of one very special tradition that we had growing up. At the head of the table, my dad would ask the question, what are you thankful for? And then each one of us around the table would take turns sharing what we're thankful for. Maybe it was one thing, or we would continue to go around a, a couple times. But as we began to articulate and state and give thanks to God for what we were thankful for, indeed, it was a blessing. It was a way in which to trust that God was with us and had been with us, and we could celebrate another year. We could celebrate what it meant to be family. We could celebrate what it meant to have faith, to put our hope um, in God's presence and his provision. And also it was a way in which we could uh, affirm, celebrate, and encourage one another in our faith and our love for each other. Uh, I was thinking this week, uh, what if today was the last day that either you or I had to breathe and somehow we got COVID and we couldn't breathe and it led to the time that we would die? If we were aware that something this, like this was about to happen to us, what would we say? I think I would say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm, I want to thank God for life. I want to thank God for people. I want to thank God for my parents. I want to thank God for my beautiful and loving wife. I want to thank God for our children who are grown up now three sons who each in their own way is wonderful and amazing at sometimes challenging, but certainly a great blessing. Each one has been teaching each of us something important and is growing in their journey. I'm so thankful for the years my wife and I have had together. The many things we've learned through good times and bad I'm thankful for churches that I've served, that I grew up in, for people of faith who showed me Jesus and some who didn't show me Jesus by their example taught me to be careful. But I'm thankful for so many wonderful Christians in the church and in other churches. There are so many religious traditions, but I'm thankful I'm thankful for people who helped me along the way. I'm not sure what their faith was, but I can certainly tell by their action there was something of God at work in them. I'm thankful for salvation. And what do I mean by that? That when I came to a place where I had received all the teachings of Jesus to a place where I could make a decision for myself and I gave my life to Jesus in prayer that he came and the Holy Spirit came within me and I knew my life inside had come alive spiritually and I was a new person. And I had no doubt at that point that I was not only forgiven by Jesus and what he did on the cross, but I became aware that a new life had begun in me. I didn't know what to call it at the time back in high school, but it was the beginning of something beautiful, and it was that saving grace that had ushered me in to a new relationship with God and then with one another, with others. I mean, you know, it. so I'm thankful most really of all for that, 
because it has given me an awareness of life here and yet to come, God's eternal covenant, so that if something happens to me, I know that I will be received into the kingdom of heaven. And that's something that helps me face COVID. It's something that helps me face my mortality. It's something that helps me live in love for others. And it, help, it helps me to show the hope that I have. So what am I thankful for most of all? I'm thankful more, most of all for, yes, life and love and family and community, but most of all for God and his love and for Jesus and what he did for me and what he does for each of us. God's salvation, that it's more than just information. It's, it's, it, it's, there's a relationship with the living God. When the Lord first brought me into this covenant, it was revolutionary. And it still is revolutionary for me every day. There's something new I learn about the grace and goodness and truth of God. Uh, I'm thankful. And this leads me to prayer daily. And in Colossians, Paul talks about always thanking God. Always. It's nonstop gratitude. So if this was the last day of my life or your life, our word of gratitude will draw us close to the grace and goodness and throne and mercy of God. Gratitude, whether we express it around the table or from our heart, it's gratitude. Paul says, in talking about thanking God and faith and love, he says, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. So not only do we thank God personally, but we do so as we think of people, people who've made a difference in our lives. And he says, you know, I'm going to always pray for you. And I know that you're always going to pray for me. There's an exchange of prayer. And it's a connection we have with God and with Jesus Christ. And there's that unity of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the family of faith. There's a fellowship that goes beyond space and time, beyond this life and the next. There is something more. And this tie that binds is something that we have to trust in. The, the strong cord of love is strong in this life, but strong in the big picture of the family of God. Someday we will be part of the great family reunion when we're gathered around a great table of thanksgiving. But until that day comes, we pray for each other. We keep each other in mind. And we are drawn in a bigger sense of unity and a cord of love, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses through our gracious God his spirit and his son, Jesus. And Paul talks about, in verse 4, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. See, it's that bond of love that draws God's people together and helps us know that we are going to be okay, even though we go through trials and troubles, pandemics, uh, hardship, sickness, illness, even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with you. His love endures forever. This we have to realize is a promise that God gives us and it helps us live for this life and into the future. So Paul not only talks about thanking God and faith and love, he also talks about thanking God for the hope of salvation. He says, he says in verse 5, the faith and love that spring from the hope <laughs> stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. This is what I've been talking about here. There is this faith and hope within us that springs up because there is this hope that we have and it's focused upon the storehouse of God's provision and grace and the the promise of heaven, yes, 
Um, it's the promise of what's yet to come and also uh, the message of the gospel itself is hope. It gives us a sense of gratitude because of the grace of God, his forgiveness, his mercy, his being with us. I mean, Jesus was with us, Emmanuel. Soon we'll be celebrating Christmas. God with us, Emmanuel. So the hope of salvation, yes, it's all rooted in God's grace, his covenant from the people of God of Israel, then into the covenant fulfilled in its completion through Jesus Christ. Uh, we find this true message of the good news of God through Jesus embodied in word and deed and in the hope that he talks about Jesus said, store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy. So our hope is not in the temporal, but in the eternal. Our hope is a living hope. It's not impractical. It's that with that perspective, it helps us to live for now. It helps us to be gracious now, helps us to be kind and loving and patient and, and gives us strength even when we face trials now. So we thank God for the hope of salvation because that helps us live now. Now the second portion of this passage from verses 6 to 8, six to eight in Colossians 1 uh, refers to thanksgiving now in the gospel of God's kingdom. Uh, the emphasis on the first part was this matter of prayer, love, faith, salvation, and heaven. But now um, Paul has a focus on the kingdom of God and the, the living reality and what the purpose we have is in this life. And the first thing he addresses in verse 6 is the where to bear fruit and where to grow. Uh, it's the whole matter of bringing the harvest in, working in the harvest in the vineyard. Verse 6, um, the true message of the gospel, and they'll continue, that has come to you in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. God is doing a great work in and through people, through his Holy Spirit and the agency of grace and providence and provision, and then we, in this matter, with the seed of God's grace and truth and the gospel bearing something of the fruit of the Spirit in us, we're able to be part of the work of the kingdom. Uh, we grow so that we can bear fruit. We bear fruit so as to plant the seed of the gospel in others. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control are some of the fruit of the Spirit. But these come as a result of sharing God's love, sharing the truth of the gospel of Jesus. These come as a result of living it out in deed, not just word. And so this message and this ministry of the gospel is bearing fruit, not only in a local sense or not only in a personal sense, but there's a work throughout the whole world. And this is what Paul celebrates as he's writing from prison. <laughs> he's thanking God in prison. Well, maybe you're thanking God in quarantine. Maybe you're thanking God in the limited stay at place situation you're in. Maybe you're thanking God even in the midst of your grief. Whatever it might be, we're to thank God for the work that still is ongoing and his grace. And in verse 7, Paul begins to talk about how we learn and serve together for Christ. He said, you learned it, the gospel, from Epaphras. So Paul thanks uh, Epaphras, he mentions him to the people here, because he's been a faithful servant preacher of the gospel in the church in Colossae. He said, you learned it, the gospel of God's grace from Epaphras. He's a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf. Isn't it great when we can encourage one another and celebrate the good work another person has done? This Thanksgiving 
Give thanks to someone who's been faithful, who's helped you, maybe a teacher uh, in Sunday school, maybe a pastor. It might be a father or a mother or an aunt or a grandmother or an uncle, somebody, a brother, somebody who shared Christ with you. Give thanks, reach out to them and say thank you. Or maybe they've been reaching out to you and sharing Jesus and and you've been struggling with the gospel and like, what is this all about? But I can't deny there's something that this person's been sharing with me that's coming at me in a very real way. And I, I, I maybe I need to thank, thank this person for reaching out to me. Well, Paul not only talks about how we learn together and serve together in Christ, he also talks about how we're, we're called to be united in love through the Holy Spirit. And so he ties this little package up here by saying um, about Epaphras, so, um, the message that Epaphras gave was that, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. The good news that Epaphras had that was passed on to Paul, that Paul could pass on to in this letter, was that they had become united in love through the Spirit of God. There was something about the people that had changed because of the work of God's Holy Spirit and that the love that they had for one another was a reflection, let's say not even a reflection, a result of the impartation of grace in them that was then evident in their actions, in their affection, uh, that they, they truly embodied the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the love of God's Spirit in their fellowship. Isn't that what we need? We need healing in our time. We need to pray that people would humble themselves before God, open their hearts to God, experience a work of God's grace, experience a work of God's healing. There's just too much division. There's too much judgmentalism. There's just too much declaration of culture war. It must stop. When a person believes in God, in Jesus Christ, there is something that should change. And we should be very careful also about going back to ways that are not in keeping with the righteousness and grace and kindness of God. God is truthful for sure, but truthfulness is not mean-spirited. Truthfulness is kind, gentle, and relies upon the work and judgment and grace of God. So this Thanksgiving, may we grow. May we grow to thank God and thank one another. Thank God for life. Thank God for eternal life. We need to pray and serve, learn, bear with one another, and bear the fruit of God's Spirit for the sake of God's kingdom not nationalism, not partisanship, but for the sake of God's kingdom. And this, by following the example and the very person of Jesus, who even gave his life for me and you. So let's pray. God, thank you that you love us. May your grace, mercy, and peace abide in our hearts here at this Thanksgiving. May we join in spirit, even if we can't join in person, and trust in your good care and keeping, and trust that there is nothing that can separate us from your love, neither height nor depth or anything else in all creation, not even a coronavirus microbe. Gracious God, there's nothing that can separate us from your love. Ultimately, gracious God, your kingdom, your love is eternal. Thank you, God. Thank you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you, make his face, face shine upon you, give you peace, hope, and love, now and forevermore. Amen. If thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. 
give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Christ in his son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us and Thanks. Good thanks.